Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing part two of our hypoxia series. If you haven't seen part one, go ahead and check it out on our YouTube channel. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because your support really means a lot to us. So with that being said, let's review hypoxia really quickly. Hypoxia is a condition where the body or part of the body does not have adequate oxygen supply, especially at the tissue level. So this is essentially happening at the tissue level. Now, what is happening is that you have low oxygen delivery to the tissues and you know that at some level, all of our tissues are dependent on oxygen. Yes, there are some tissues that are less dependent, like muscle tissues that are more resilient to hypoxia as compared to nerve cells. But at the end of the day, all of our tissues are dependent on oxygen. The reason why is that oxygen is the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain. Now, I'm sure you probably forgot a little bit about this, so just a quick recap. Essentially, you need oxygen to be able to accept the last electron in oxidative phosphorylation. So what happens when you have a decrease in oxygen in the case of hypoxia? Well, you are gonna actually impair oxidative phosphorylation and not be able to accept electrons and at the end of the day hypoxia is gonna lead to low ATP or energy that is very important to understand that is why hypoxia is so dangerous and it is so deadly to cells now when it comes to the causes of of hypoxia you have ischemia which we discussed in our previous lecture but in this video we're gonna be discussing hypoxemia and the decreased oxygen carrying capacity both of these are very important both of these are very high yield a high yield as F and you really need to understand what's happening and commit that to memory so with that being said, let's just dive right into it and let's talk about hypoxemia. Hypoxemia is actually a state in which you have abnormally low levels of oxygen in the blood. Remember, hypoxia, let's write this here, hypoxia is the overall theme, right? And this is at the tissue level. Now when you go a little bit deeper, hypoxemia, hypoxemia, is at the level of your blood, right? You have decreased O2 in the blood. That is what is happening. So essentially, hypoxemia is characterized by a low partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. So your PaO2 is going to be low. Your normal PaO2 is somewhere around 75 to 105 millimeters per mercury, but in hypoxemia, you're going to have a PaO2 that is going to be less than 60 millimeters of mercury and an SaO2 or an O2 stat that is going to be less than 90% saturation. Now, this might seem a little confusing. You might not remember it. So we're going to do a quick review of what all of these numbers and of all of these uh, uh, essential concepts mean keep in mind that the numbers themselves might not be as important because they're often given to you in the exam but you need to know the main concepts so let's do a quick review so you have four main concepts or four main things you need to know when it comes to oxygen and oxygen delivery and those are right here you have your FiO2 P big AO2 P little a O2 and SaO2 essentially the way I like to remember it is I think of oxygen going from the atmosphere into our blood and what is the pathway it's going to go through first off oxygen is available in the atmosphere atmosphere right atm this is depicted by fio2 okay and then from the atmosphere we breathe in oxygen and it goes into our alveoli and that is depicted by p big ao2 so we're going to write alveoli so now that oxygen is in our lungs, it's in the alveolar airspace, it has to diffuse. And once it diffuses from our alveoli, it goes into the arteries, so the arterioles, and that is P little a O2. And then from the arterioles, you can actually check how much of the hemoglobin is actually saturated and that is your SaO2 or your oxygen saturation. So essentially hypoxemia is gonna occur if you are damaging or if you are uh, essentially preventing any of these steps from atmosphere all the way to hemoglobin, uh, if you are preventing any of these steps from happening or if you're preventing 
the saturation of oxygen in the blood from occurring. So let's just break it down. What are some causes of hypoxemia? This is very high yield. Uh, one cause of hypoxemia is high altitude. In high altitude, you have decreased oxygen in the atmosphere, right? Essentially, the oxygen pressure is decreased, and that means your atmospheric pressure of oxygen, the FiO2, goes down. So you have a, a decrease in FiO2, and remember this pathway. If FiO2 goes down, everything else is going to go down because there's no oxygen available to go into your alveoli, into your arterioles, and to saturate your uh, hemoglobin. Hence, because you're affecting it upstream, you're going to affect everything downstream as well in this pathway. That is one cause. Very simple. The second cause is carbon dioxide buildup. Carbon dioxide buildup is going to lead to an increase in P big A CO2, the alveoli concentration of CO2. If you guys remember, CO2 and O2 are going to essentially be going head to head with each other. So if one goes up, the other one has to go down. In this case, in carbon dioxide buildup, P, uh, P big A CO2, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the alveoli, in the alveolar airspace, is going to go up. So when you have an increase in CO2, you're going to have a decrease in O2, and because you're affecting this cascade in the alveolar position, essentially you're going to have a decrease in the arterial concentration and the O2 sat, and that's going to give you levels of hypoxemia. Okay, that is what is written right here. This can happen in cases of hypoventilation and COPD. That's very common. And then finally, you have interstitial lung disease. Interstitial lung disease is actually affecting this, this step right here. You're preventing oxygen from actually crossing over from the alveoli into the arterial. And because you're preventing that whole process, you're going to have a decrease in P little a O2 or the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveolar, sorry, in the arterial arterial arteriolar air, air excuse me you're going to have a decrease in oxygen partial pressure of oxygen in the arter, arterioles themselves wow that was a mouthful that is what's happening so because you are preventing oxygen transfer and oxygen diffusion you are going to see a decrease in p little a o2 and sao2 essentially giving you uh a presentation of hypoxemia. All of this is very high yield. I think this slide is probably one of the most high yield slides I have in this entire hypoxia lecture series that we have, the two-part series, and I highly recommend you remember all of this. Commit this to memory and make sure you understand what is happening with hypoxemia and hypoxia. Now that we've discussed majority of the cascade and how hypoxemia can affect the cascade, we need to discuss these last two positions right here, right? These last two positions haven't really been discussed, especially the O2 saturation, and that is because the O2 saturation is going to be dependent on the carrier of oxygen, which is hemoglobin. So one example of, of hypoxia is hypoxemia. The other example that we're going to discuss is decreased oxygen carrying capacity. Essentially, you are talking about hemoglobin and red blood cells at this point, which is indicative, in my opinion, of SAO2, the oxygen saturation. So like we said, Oxygen is carried in the blood through the red blood cells and the hemoglobin that we have within the red blood cells because that's what oxygen is binding. Now you have several ways you can have a decrease in oxygen carrying capacity. One such way is anemia. Anemia decreases red blood cell mass and it's high enough just enough to carry uh, oxygen tissues, right? When you decrease red blood cell mass enough that your red blood cells can't carry enough oxygen to the tissues, you're going to have uh, you're going to have a decrease in the oxygen carrying capacity. At the same time, you can also depict anemia as a decrease in hemoglobin concentration or hemoglobin itself, and that also means you're going to have a decrease in oxygen carrying capacity because you don't have that oxygen carrier available in the first place. So that's one example. The next two examples are very high yield, and you should remember them. They're going to come up over and over again in hematology and even pulmonology, so you should just commit to it now. Commit this to memory. The second example that causes a decrease in oxygen carrying capacity is carbon monoxide poisoning. The reason why is that carbon monoxide binds more avidly to hemoglobin than oxygen. 
That is very important. Carbon monoxide actually has the ability to displace oxygen. It pushes oxygen off from the hemoglobin binding sites and it binds itself. And what this is going to cause is a normal PaO2, but a decrease in oxygen saturation. So if you think about your blood vessels, right, here's your blood vessel. You have enough oxygen saturation because nothing is actually preventing the blood from coming from the alveoli, which is depicted right here, right? So you don't have anything preventing oxygen coming in into the arterioles from the alveoli. So essentially your P little AO2 or your partial pressure of oxygen in your arteries is going to be normal. Nothing is preventing that. You don't have interstitial lung disease. You don't have a decrease in FiO2. You don't, or you don't have a decrease in P big AO2. It's essentially nothing, right? The problem you have is then oxygen going into the red blood cell which is depicted right here, and then binding to hemoglobin. That is not happening. That's the main reason. So you're going to see a normal PaO2, but a decrease in oxygen saturation because hemoglobin is not being bound to oxygen. Very, very important, very high yield to understand what is going on. Now, Carbon monoxide poisoning has several classic vignettes. It can be due to gas heaters in the winter, especially in a closed environment. Let's say uh, someone presents and they say in the vignette that the patient has been sitting inside in a small room with a gas heater, or they see a smoke from a fire or a car exhaust. That's very common. In fact, the car exhaust could be a type of suicide attempt, right? That could often happen. So that is another type of clinical you know vignette pearl that they can give you to make you think about carbon monoxide poisoning now the classic presentation is going to be cherry red lips this is very important this is a classic appearance uh, cherry red appearance of the skin this is a false physical representation of hypoxia right you wouldn't think that a patient would present with cherry red lips or cherry red appearance of the skin because they have less oxygen but this is the classic presentation. But usually in the clinical setting and usually in the vignettes, often they're going to tell you that the patient has a headache and that's often the first sign. So headache, cherry, red, and normal PaO2 decreased SaO2. If you can remember this vignette, you have covered carbon monoxide poisoning. Very, very important. The next uh, cause of the decreased oxygen carrying capacity is methemoglobinemia. Now remember, oxygen is normally, uh, sorry, hemoglobin normally has iron molecules in the middle, and that iron molecule is a Fe2 plus molecule. When it gets oxidized, into the Fe3 plus molecule, you have methemoglobinemia. You have methemoglobin essentially occurring. This is dangerous because methemoglobin makes oxygen binding to the hemoglobin much, much harder. It's really hard to bind to the oxidized form compared to the normal reduced form of iron that should be there. Now, what's going to end up happening is going to be similar to uh, the carbon monoxide poisoning where you have a normal PaO2 but a decrease in SaO2. You're mainly affecting SaO2 here. The same concept applies that you are not affecting anything in the atmosphere. You're not affecting the ability of your alveoli to have a less partial pressure of oxygen, right? Like you would in COPD or emphysema, right? In chronic obstructive lung disease. And you're not affecting the ability of the oxygen going from the alveoli into your arterioles. So you're going to have a normal PaO2. What you are affecting is the oxygen carrier, which is hemoglobin. And that means you're going to have a decrease in SaO2. If hemoglobin is not working properly and you have met hemoglobin, you're not going to be able to bind uh, hemoglobin and oxygen together and it's going to be much harder. Hence, you're going to see an increase in SAO2. This is often due to oxidative, oxidant stress 
commonly caused by drugs like nitrates, sulfur drugs, or benzocaine. A common presentation is going to be a patient who comes after a visit to a dentist or he's at the dentist and you see cyanosis and chocolate colored blood when you draw blood. Now, the treatment for this is very simple, okay, and it's very easy to remember. It's going to be IV methylene blue with vitamin C as ancillary treatment. The way I remembered it is met hemoglobin is treated with methylene blue. Meth with meth. Like, that's simply the way I remembered it and it always stuck. And then for some reason, vitamin C just happens to be there, right? That's, that, that's just the way I, I think about it. The reason why is that this treatment is going to help reduce the Fe3+, the met, the met heme portion in met hemoglobin, hemoglobinemia back into the reduced form Fe2+. So IV methylene blue is going to cause the oxidized iron molecule Fe3+, to go into the reduced Fe2 plus state, which is normal. Hence, you will be able to then have a normal functioning hemoglobin structure. And you can then fix your decrease in SAO2. Now, this is going to be a quick review of hypoxia. Hypoxia can be caused by either ischemia, hypoxemia, or a low oxygen carrying capacity. So let's just talk about ischemia really quickly. Ischemia can be due to decreased oxygen going to the tissues or coming from the tissues like a arterial thrombus or obstruction or a venous thrombus or obstruction okay and it can also be caused by generalized shock which is going to cause hypoperfusion in hypoxemia you can have a decrease in the atmospheric oxygen which is a decrease in FiO2 a decrease or a buildup of CO2 in the alveoli which is a increase in P big A CO2 which translates into a decrease in P big A O2, or you can have a decrease in oxygen transport between the alveoli and the arterioles, and that's going to cause a decrease in P little a O2. And then finally, you can have a low oxygen carrying capacity, which can be caused by either anemia, which means you have either decreased red blood cells slash hemoglobin in CO poison, carbon monoxide poisoning in which you have a decrease in SAO2 due to more avid binding. By carbon monoxide or met hemoglobinemia, which is essentially a defective type of hemoglobin. Okay, now don't forget this pathway. FiO2 goes to PaO2 to P little a or the arterial con partial pressure of oxygen into the oxygen saturation. This will be able to make it a lot easier for you to figure out what is happening and what the lab values will be for certain causes of hypoxia, especially hypoxemia and low oxygen carrying capacity. Very, very high yield. Very important to remember. I hope that was helpful. If it was, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Like I said, your support really means a lot to us, and we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you back here real soon.